YouTube Live. And thanks as always to the sponsors, Cornerstone Business Solutions, Galaxy Blinds and Interiors, RWTA, that's Richard World Train Associates, Advanced Utility Solutions, Cleveland Systems Engineering, TGM Cars, and Borough Shop Museum. Um, on Friday night, Newcastle United took all three points away at Notts Forest, the 2 1 victory. Uh, and Saturday, Middlesbrough tore Preston North End to shreds. I witnessed that one. Sunderland drew 1 1 with Luton. Obviously, they, they were only a point behind Middlesbrough in right that game. Um, Hartlepool drew 2 2 away at Bradford City. Good point for, for uh, Hartlepool. And Darlington walloped Hereford 3 goals to nil. Um, looking at the, the games at the weekend, I watched in the Friday night. I was actually at a, it was a birthday party. It was in a, a pub and there was a. Well, the Newcastle game is on. So obviously I was attracted to that. I watched it. I thought it was a good game of football. Newcastle United scored just on the stroke of half time or 47 minutes. Uh, got a goal. It was a flip the outside the foot. It was a fine goal. Um, and then it was Isaac. And then late on in the game, they get a penalty. It was about 93, 94 minutes. And it was a penalty. Lad used his hand in Newcastle. They won the game. Uh, Saturday we went into the game Middlesbrough at the Riverside against Preston North End. Preston North End hadn't been beat for uh, seven games. So they came with a bit of confidence but we turned up. The opening 15 minutes it was nip and top and then all of a sudden we came to life. Lovely uh, play between uh, Akpom and uh, Archer. The ball got back to Akpom. His first touch was immaculate. His finish was terrific and that got us on my way and then we, we pummeled them. We we uh, tore them to shreds. Um, Archer got two and Foz got one. So 4 0 was, uh, could have been more. Um, Sunderland Luton. Uh, Sunderland were getting beat by Luton up to about the 86 minute. And then Diallo scored the goal. Diallo scored a few this season. He's anti double figures. And then uh, Hartlepool, as I mentioned at the top, uh, 2 2. Uh, Cook and Kemp get the goal. So well done to them. And then uh, Rivers, Nelson and Hazel. I'm sure got the goals for uh, for Darlington. They won three 0 against Hereford. Hereford. Every time I say Hereford, I think of Malcolm McDonald. Remember Supermac, Newcastle United against Hereford and Ronnie Radford, the wee guy with the pot belly, scored a wonder goal, knocked Newcastle out, who were favourites. They probably won the cup. Then they get beat with the the mighty Hereford. I always remember that. Um, Tom Corrigal, my old mate, says looking forward to Friday. Dennis has asked his missus for some pocket money to come. Oh, it's very nice. Well, that's the world we live in now, isn't it? Tom, you need to go begging to your missus now to get money. And if she says no, then that's you knacked, isn't it? Dennis will be drinking tea all night if he doesn't get the money for alcohol. Hey, Tom, is, uh, Tom's obviously coming to the um, the uh, doing Friday night. Gary Pattinson night is at the town hall. Loads of tickets been sold. Still a few left in the balconies only. £30 and £50. Pound. You can book via the town hall. But it's going to be a great night. It's going to be a nostalgic night. Um, looking forward to seeing all my old teammates, Stephen Pears, obviously Tony Mowbray, who's now the Sunderland manager, Pallister, who I always see, uh, Colin Cooper, Paul Kerr, Gary Hamilton. He texted me last night. He started his flight now, 24 hours to get here. What an effort for Gary Hamilton. I mean, he was only here two months ago uh, at a game and, and I told him all the pencils this state and he went, oh, I don't know if I can get by. Anyway, he's paid for his own flights. The lot he's coming back to support Parky. Archie Stevens, who lives local, he'll be there, uh, and a host of others: Lee Turnbull, Paul Proudlock, Gary Gill. It's going to be a great night. Um, it'll be emotional as well because Gary Pattinson himself's coming. Gary or Parky, as I call him, he's on a wheelchair. His family's coming. They've got a table, uh, and no doubt Parky will get the biggest cheer of the night. Some great prizes that I got. Um, Mackenzie Thorpe, he's a local painter, born and bred in Middlesbrough, but he's, his paintings go worldwide. He's known all over the, the world these days. And he's donated a, a unique picture for the night. And he's did a video clip. We'll be showing that on the screen. And uh, I watched it today and it was, yeah, it was really, really good. You know, because obviously he's a local lad. He's a borough lad. And he's donated this uh, original. Um, and it's a great painting. Uh, Chris Rears gave us a Taylor Swift guitar, which Taylor Swift has signed, and Chris has signed the back of Chris Rear. Uh, we've got a, a, a villa in Spain and a place called Mercia. It's a golfing place, golfing resort. You don't have to play golf, you can still go on holiday. Uh, it sleeps 10, and then we've got uh, 
a place at Whitby you can go and stay for a week. So loads of and I met I've met a few guys today, picked up balls and a signed shirt for that Gary Parkinson Parky wore for Preston. Parkinson on the back. So loads of borough shirts. We've got Paddy McNair's shirt. We've got um bottles of gin up for grabs. We'll sign pictures, hopefully I get you to sign a few with myself. Um and I'll be available on the night. I'll backtrack now. Uh, so that was that. Um, where are we, worried? Uh, all right, Bernie, I'm tipping Borough automatics, and unfortunately the gaps are big for Sunderland to get the playoffs. This is the Ann Thrivers uh, playoff closing. That gap was like Mickey Hoswell denying his bold and saying it's a six-inch pattern. <laughs> Talking about Mickey Hoswell. Mickey Hoswell's coming on Friday to support. Mickey Hoswell supported partly in the past. I remember he hosted the night of the Tall Trees. Gary Phillipson, local BBC, will be hosting the night. Gary's a mate of mine. We used to work on the radio with myself and the late great Ali Brownlee. So he'll be the host. But Mickey also has come along to support the night. Um, I was at his birthday bash not so long ago, a week or two ago. And Mickey's a great lad and he's a big support. I remember him coming to, um, to see Parky in a, in, a, in a priory in Bolton when he first took a bad turn and... Uh, Mickey came with me, so Mickey's coming uh, at the weekend, uh, at the weekend, on Friday night. And don't forget, there's no games at the weekend. It's a great night to go out, have a few drinks, have a bit of a laugh. Uh, see the 86 team, see Bruce Rears, Chairman Steve Gibson's going over there. Lenny Lawrence is coming, I got in touch with Lenny yesterday, to, just to remind him, because I told him a while back that he's more than welcome and he's coming along, which is great. Steve Gibson has... Uh, Acknowledged a while back when I texted him, he says, Yeah, he would love to be there. So great, it's going to, it's going to be a, a great night. There'll be a few familiar faces you know on the stage and off the stage. Uh, hi, Bernie, great result on Saturday. I'm currently in Grangemouth at the minute. Got a job in the morning for Bilk Hall. It's for Craig Dale's Bilk Hall, of course. It's Steve Gibson, the Mighty Neil's company. You ever been here? Just had Scotch pie and chips. Chips were rank. <laughs> Grangemouth, no, I don't think I'm currently in Grangemouth. I don't think I've ever really been to Grangemouth. A job in the morning for Bilk Hall. Uh, you ever been here, just had Scotch pie and chips? Chips were rank. Oh, no, I don't. Um, yeah, the Scotch pie was all right. Scotch pie in Grangemouth. Scotch pie, if you don't know what Scotch pie is, it's a round pie. Like a sort of a lid in it where we hole and obviously the mince is inside and it's circular. Yeah, I used to eat the pie, I don't eat them now, but... Uh, Colin Price says, hi Bernard, life, uh, life feels even better when the mighty borough are doing well up the borough. You're right, Colin, it gives everybody a spring and a step. Um, you know, you want about Middlesbrough and everybody's what you talk about borough, how good uh, Carrick's doing, how brilliant Tuba's doing, the team as a whole, fantastic. 28,000, the crowd swelled on Saturday. It used to be about 21, 22, but with every game now, and obviously there is some people jumping the bandwagon. Life's full of those kind of guys. But there is some people who cannot afford and think, you know what, I'll push the boat out and go and see Middlesbrough and see how good they are. Because I keep reading about them, I hear about them. And they're the ones I sympathise, you know, they've not got the money to attend every game and buy a season ticket or whatever. Uh, Cal Macca, my old mate. How are you, Cal? Cal's a Sunderland fan. Just tuned in. Not a great result for Sunderland. Uh, Bernie and played well and lost. Uh, I'm off to the upcoming Scotland matches. Hope you're well, my friend. Yeah, Cal Macker, uh, great lad. I've mentioned him over the weeks. He's um, a Sunderland fan. He's, he's a blind lad, uh, but he's amazing. Um, goes to every game, Sunderland home and away. In between, he'll try and go to Hibernian. He's a Hibs fan as well. I don't know how that happened. Uh, but um, he's a great lad. He's a... Oh, he's a big Sunderland fan as well. Uh, great bloke, Mickey Hosso, but after speaking to him a few times, he definitely has a man crush about rooming with George. I know who's coming best, you're going to say best. George Best, haha. Yeah, Mickey Hosso tells a story where they were abroad and he was rooming with George Best. This is after they played. I think they went to America or something. Was it America? Or was it in London? And Mickey, uh, George was lying in the bed, half whatever, Sozzled and the door went and Mickey, I think it was just George's doorman, opened the door and there was Omar Sharif with a couple of women. How cool is that? Mickey didn't know who Omar Sharif was. You know, the guy with the big tash, he was an actor. Uh, oh, the pie was, was okay. Craig was he's on about the pies. Jane Mills says, hi, Bernie. How much do you enjoy watching the borough? Millsy, I tell you what. Um, I didn't get 
uh, at the minute we've been we've been fantastic on the eye to watch. Over the years, I've been bored. It became a chore. You know, watch it, I keep saying it, but it's boring and repetitive, but I'll say it again. You know, well there, some games was good, some was poor. Um, forever ch chopping and changing positions and we kept the same formation. The rigid five at the back was boring. Warnock, boring, long ball, a throwback to the old Wimbledon side. Tony Pulis, um, Karanka, boring. For me as an attack-minded thinker in football and a, a former striker, um, I would have totally despised playing for any of them. I think I'd have rather been thrown to the Lions than play under those those three or four. Eight straight wins, I think, Bernie, to pip Sheffield United. Anything's possible. Anything's possible. We are good enough to go on the run, but we have got some big games. If you're a Borough fan, and no doubt you've looked at the, the calendar and the remaining eight games, in there we've still got Luton, who's breathing down our necks. We've got Norwich. Um. So there is big games coming up. We've got, obviously, Burnley. I mean, people are saying Burnley get blown away with Man City, and they did. But we get blown away by uh, Brighton Hove Albion in the Cup. That's the gulf we've got where we're going. This is this is the gulf that we have to face if we do get promoted. And and some lads will make it and some lads won't make it. Some will fall by the wayside. Matt Thompson says, what do you think this uh, will happen if we fail automatic promotion and do win in the playoffs? Do you think Carrick will leave? Uh, so what do you think will happen if we fail automatic promotion and don't win in the playoffs? Do you think Carrick will leave us? Me personally, I don't think he will. But guys like Giles and Chuba and all these guys, if we don't make it, those will be envious eyes looking at them. And, and looking at their progress this season and looking at how well they've done. I mean, Gels is my biggest provider, making goals, creating goals. People say he's flawed defensively, but a lot of the modern defenders, full backs, wing backs, are flawed. But going that way, great engines, great energy, uh, create it, creates all different kind of goals. He can whip them in, he can put them in the air. Um, they're accurate, he lifts his head before he delivers. Some guys play blind. Um, and Chuba's obviously in fire and, and his all-round game has been unbelievably great this season. Apart, apart from his 24, 25 goals, he's been immense. And if we don't make it, my my fear as a Borough fan would be that we'll cash in. I don't mind cashing in if you're going to replace, but the odds of getting another Chuba, we've waited, as I say, we've spent £150 million to get a striker that scores 20 league goals in a season since eighty nine. So since 1989, we've spent 150 million on strikers. By God, there have been some duffers. Even Bernie, what a game, Rob Tip. What a game on Saturday. I do think we will sneak second. I hope you're right, um, Rob. But I'd rather be in their shoes than their shoes. They're three points ahead, game in hand, but they still have to win the game in hand. Some people are saying to me, they're in the cup. I mean, I watched the game last night against Blackburn. It was a great game. Exciting, entertaining. Goals, tackles. Um, and then out of the blue, Sheffield scored the wonder goal. It was about 25 yards out, top left-hand corner. Keep it full stretch, flew in the top of the net. Um, I, I've always said for years when, when I listen to Borough fans and my mates know that, for me, it's a cop-out. Oh, it's, it's OK, we're out the cup. It doesn't matter, we'll concentrate in the league. I don't think the Cup's get any burn on the league. Them winning last night and being in the semis at Wembley, that could be the biggest boost they get. No, except injuries, but I don't see any problem being in a cup and going for the league. I remember we got knocked out the last few years, early doors, way before Carrick. I've never seen any progression in the league. We never even made top six. Uh, well, Gibson have deep enough pockets for the Premier if you go up. Well, I'm sure the, uh, the money that we would get, we would have the money, whether we spend it or not, it's a... Another question. I don't know the answer to that. Only Steve Gibson can answer that. But Steve Gibson, we have to remember that Steve Gibson's not a billionaire. I mean, these sheiks are coming over for all over. And the the billionaires, trillionaires. Steve Gibson's a millionaire, self-made millionaire, born and bred in Middlesbrough. Um, has did fantastically well for the club, supported us to the hill financially over the years through the Ravinelli, Janino, got us to the Carlin Cup. We won the Carlin Cup first trophy in my history, got to the UEFA Cup final, 
Um, brought some of the biggest names again: Paul Merson, uh, Christian Zieger. Remember the German fullback, um, Alan Boxic, Creation International, Gaza. We had some uh, fantastic players, Emerson. But I think those days, well, since those days, we've not really brought in a lot of household names. We we tend to bring in younger lads now, and we're building hopefully for the future. But that, that's one of the downsides about the loan players. I mean, the loan players have come in. I look at it now and I see Ramsey and Archer doing the business along with Akpom. They're scoring goals. And the no other players. And at the end of the season, they're probably back to the parent club unless we put a, a fair amount of cash on the table. Uh, Robert Tipsy, uh, how many points is more important? Totally think they will look at the FA Cup now, though. Now, nah, Rob, I think they know, we know that the league's paramount importance. The cups are the cup for me is um it's not a distraction, it's a get out and, and gives you a bit of time to focus on something else, and then you come back to the bread and butter, which is the league. That's the way I look at it. I don't look at it negatively being in the cup. I'd love Middlesbrough being a semi-final. Would you not? Uh, Graham Madison says give up with football now in Bernie after yesterday. Fernandez pushes a linesman, no action. For, by the way, you're dead right. You're right. Fernandes pushes the linesman and there was no action. And then your big man up front for Fulham pushes the ref, sent off, and then there was chaos. The manager ended up getting... A, uh, Fulham lad, forget his name, red card. Yeah, the big centre forward, yeah, his name. I know who you're talking about. Something Vich, yeah. But he did push the referee, i seen it, but you're right. This is the thing. For me, it has to be all or nothing. If I push somebody, I get sent off. I don't stay on, then the next guy pushes somebody or the referee, whatever. As I say, it was it was nonsense and they totally lost the plot. I thought, Fulham are doing ever so well. Mitrovic, big Mitrovic. Fulham are doing ever so well. Actually, they were they were better than Man United up to that point. Then all of a sudden, you've lost a player or two. Nightmare. Uh, and Thriver says, what would you view playing Newcastle United if you were promoted with their money? The golfing quality of uh, a newly promoted side uh, they would gloat for example they're still celebrating an anniversary of drawing 2-2 into we Lani 28 years ago um, and obviously they're wee dig at Newcastle look Newcastle United did brilliant they've got big investors in the manager's done very well uh, Newcastle sitting fifth in the league couple of points behind Tottenham who seem to be a bit of turmoil despite their league position Conte's well for me Conte I like a bit of honesty and Conte is just saying it how it is and uh, the hierarchy certainly won't be happy. Maybe maybe he's one sack, but if you open your mouth these days anyway, you get the sack. So I'm sure Conte does need the money. He does need the fame. He's already famous and loaded. Um, but I think he wants the best for Tottenham and he's more or less saying that Tottenham's been in this trend for many, many years uh, and still suffering from it, whatever it is. And he's trying to expose that. Uh, hi, it's Les from New Zealand and Dingleby. Oh, Leslie, yeah. New Zealand, Dingleby, dear God. Um, what is here? I always say I read these and I never read them. Let me read these. So, so the Gary Parts tonight, if you want to come along, I know, maybe born, but, you know, this is an important night. Friday night, so four nights away. Um, Middlesbrough Town Hall. The, the, the floor is total sold out. Um... Tables are 10 or whatever it is. And then there's two balconies. We need to sell a few more tickets up there. But it's going to be a great night. The tickets are priced 30 and £50. Pound. Um, and all the money goes direct to Gary Parkinson and his family for Parker, who needs 24 hour care. If you don't know, and you've, I don't know where you've been, I've been mentioning it for ages, but uh, Parker suffered a stroke in 2010. He's got what you call locked in syndrome, which means he's paralysed. From the, I mean, I hate talking about it, but I, I think I have to because it's a charity. He's paralysed for neck downwards. He has to communicate via his eyes and he needs 24-hour care. So in his house, his wife's there, obviously, I think his daughters, I think many daughters are still there. But he's got a family who, when they're back, they all take care of him, look after him. But there's enough stays in the house um, every night. So 24-hour care he still needs. And he said this since 2010. So... The, the family, I keep saying it, the family has never once asked Marcel or the 86 lads could they raise uh, money. It's just, I think, the majority is uh, charitable 
and we've got a conscience, I certainly have, and I love Park as a player, I love him as a human being, uh, and I can't wait to see him on Friday and give him like a big cuddle, because I've not seen Park for three years. Park was a loyal lad, Thornaby lad, stuck through the liquidation scenario at Middlesbrough, played third, second, first, came out at Wembley with his first time we ever made it at Wembley as a Middlesbrough team. Parker was part of that. Um, still up for going full frontal, Bernie. Yo, Ian May, Ian May got in touch ages ago and said, if we finish top two, what, how far would you go? And I said, I'd go full frontal, but it needs to be a big window. You know, you get clear all the rubbish off the, the, the window edges and make sure it's a massive window, for obvious reasons. Um, somebody offered me it in the lounge the other week. Somebody shouted, how far would you go? And I says, full frontal. I don't mind a bit of nakedness. Um, just make sure I don't get arrested. Uh, Leslie says, do you think he will have a... I don't know. I still pray for Parky. Um as I say, if you if you had a daughter and you wanted to marry somebody out of the 86 squad, it would have been Gary Pattinson all day long. Great lad, good living lad, family of guy. And and the, the girl he's, he's married to now, Deborah, she's um she's been an absolute rock. Deborah, they met his childhood, sweethearts, married, three kids, three lovely kids. Um just just a great family. Uh, and says second best wishes to part party and you and the 86 lads. I do them proud of true togetherness. Yeah, he says, never forgotten. That's the thing, I'm, I'll meet lads in the 86 team in, in Friday night at the town hall who have not met for a right since the last two, four or five years ago. And it'll be as if we were talking to each other yesterday. We reminisce, we talk about some of the, the funny things, some of the, the good games, some of the bad games, how crap we were. We, we have a dig at each other and uh, it's brilliant. You know, we've all got different roles these days. I mean, Stephen Pears, I think he does building. He's the former keeper. Colin Cooper is doing a bit of coaching. With, was it Bristol? Who was away recently? No, it wasn't in Bristol. Um, anyway, Colin Cooper's involved in the game. Tony Mowbray's manager of Sunderland. Gary Pass is just a millionaire. He just lounges a bit like a lizard. Um, Gary Hamilton coaches in America. Um, Brian Laws, I think he was involved in VIP cars, like uh, hiring them, renting them, whatever. Uh, Stuart Ripley, solicitor, no soliciting, solicitor, yeah, you clever lad. Archie Stevens, burglar. Um, Kathy, no, Archie Stevens, uh, Archie's actually retired now. He's looking well, Archie, he's still got broad shoulders and saw a great lad, see him regular, because um, he loves local to me. He's a great guy. So we've all, and, and I'm just a, a lizard as well, I just lounge about. Uh, right, let's read these. Great to see, um, hold on. One. Uh, Jordy George, so Jordy George, because I'm trying I'm not be in North East, but I keep getting butterflies and I'm happy with that. Uh, Newcastle still a mere great chance of top four, Bernie. Do you think? Um, well, without a doubt, as I say, you're, you're sitting fifth, um, George, uh, Jordy George. 47 points, two points behind Spurs with a game in hand. So you have to say, yeah, games are run now. He did really well, Eddie Howe. Uh, Mel Sunderland fan says, disappointed on your mate, Tony Mowbray, coming out last week and saying a middle table finish would be acceptable. Uh, I sort of read something, uh, Mel. I think it's a bit of honesty for Mugger. What would he want him to do? Mugger's been asked a question, more or less, what's your remit? He says, more or less, that if we finish mid-table, it's not the end of the world. And he's more or less ticked a box that he was... I don't think anybody expected him to be in the top six. I I don't think Sunderland have been in the top six because of no strikers. You know, you, you've got young novices in there. The, the big boys, the boy returned to Everton in loan. Um, big Stuart got injured out for the season. And then you've got a couple of rookies in. Rookies aren't going to get you promoted. Um, so... Bob the Borough fan says, It's amazing uh, what we have finally... We're finally getting players that can score goals. Without a doubt, I mean, at the minute I go to the games, I know who's playing where, what formation, who's playing where. We're going to try and do it with a bit of style. And we know that Akpom, Ramsey, Archer, Foz has chipped in me a few goals, are going to score goals. And that's, that's nice. You know, I used to go to the games thinking, who's going to score? Watching guys like Rudy Justed, Don Lee, Michael Ricketts, uh, Jason Yule, 
uh, Leroy Little. You remember all these names? It's incredible, isn't it? So many names you forgot about. Then there was Tonkey Stanley, who was a good player, but wasn't here long enough. Caboni, Benito Caboni, you remember him? Um, yes, he got me off a court. He got me off court, Ripley, dear God. Uh, Graham Addison says, does it matter what you are all doing now, Bernie? 11 leg ends in my eyes made my town proud in the 80s. Oh, no, I was in, I was, yeah, I'm sure we did do you proud. And the lads got the backing for the support. And I'm sure we um, we give you back something in return, i.e. keeping the, the, the club afloat. It was on the, the verge of liquidation, bankruptcy, and we, we kept it going. So... If it happened now, the, the modern player would just disappear because it was the, the club messed the contracts up. We were all free if we wanted to go, but the majority of the local lads loved the, the, the town, the team, and, and everything about it and stayed put. Uh, Charlie Butterfly says, Sheffield United could lose 12 points if they get the administration. No, well, there's a lad, Stephen Bettis, I think that's his name, a CEO. He's more or less just put it to bed. He's denied speculation that the club could get into um, administration. So I think if he says that, there must be a bit more truth than what you read in the papers. Don't forget, you read the, I don't read the papers, but the papers, I wouldn't even believe the date. Uh, Mowbray's done amazing. Mel, his hands were tied from January, definitely, and he's kept uh, kept us up. We have fell full of unwillingness to invest. Let's see if I can get that. To invest in January. And date first team injuries in Mowbray's fault. Uh, not Mowbray's fault. Oh, well done. He, he's done a great job. Look, I know Sunderland fans that go to the game and say they're, they're, they're more than happy with the style and brand of football they're playing. They beat us in the Derby game. That was one of the few games we let ourselves down in. No taking that away from Sunderland, but they beat us 2 1 up there. Um, but yeah, I think Mowbray's doing a great job. But as I say, top six. Personally, I'd love to see him in top six. I'd love to see him back in the Premier. I was back in the Premier. More derby games. You know, I remember playing Sunderland, Newcastle in the same league as us. Great derby games are brilliant. Uh, Martin says, rookies aren't going to get you promoted. Exactly. Can't win anything with kids. Well, no, no, that was Alan Hansen. He goes on to say that. Alan Hansen, the year Man United won it. Wait for the... No. That was totally different. That was start of the season. All the kids... Hansen had written them off, says they won nothing, and Man United went and won everything. No, but th these are young kids coming in now to a Sunderland team who's not up the top, and for them to try and nudge them in the right way, I think it's very difficult. Very difficult. As I say, the guys at the top, not to give Mowbray money, um, knowing that two strikers have uh, disappeared, one by Everton and one, one injured, you would think they'd have invested and says, January, look, you go and get a... I know they're hard to find. It's easy saying it, but you have to go and do it. But I don't know what money is available to Tony Mowbray. I don't know anything about the, the money situation. I was with Tony Mowbray a few weeks ago, having a coffee. Don't get me wrong, and I talk about them privately. I would never repeat because it's private conversation, but um, I think I did tell him that I don't think it makes make the top six. Um, Tom the Butterfly says, Bernie, over the years, a few clubs have gone out the game or on the brink of bankruptcy. As a player at Middlesbrough who went through it, and, and, and you, you, the club got saved. How did you get through it? How difficult was it? As for Tom, I'll tell you what, Tom, just wait a wee drink of water. But what happened, Tom? I mean, the younger generation don't get it. They just think everything's glamorous. Nice stadiums, nice food, nice seats, nice training ground, big name players, big big money players. Um, what had happened, We my first season in England, we get relegated liquidated and bankrupt. So we get relegated for the second to the third. And then we in administration. The gates were locked. So we couldn't train on at Erson Park. We had to go and train in local parts like Stewart's Park, which is open to everybody, Council Run, Albert Park, Redka Beach. Anywhere we could we used to train at a place called Hall Drive where the dogs used to chase you. Seriously, dogs. Um and then we weren't getting paid. And we could have all headed off for the pastures new, but because the majority were local, as I mentioned earlier, they stayed put. I stayed put. I just bought a house, 25 grand, Westbourne Road. Not a lot of money. I mean, players are getting treble that these days. At Middlesbrough, let alone, 25 grand house was a lot of money for me. Um, anyway, I'm thinking, how am I going to pay my mortgage? I'm not getting paid for the football club. Uh, anyway, the PFA 
put money into the town hall in Middlesbrough, where they do us on Friday. That will bring back a few memories. And we had to go there and collect our money. So every, uh, at the end of every week, a month, I think it was week, we would go there, sign um, in the council headquarters because the money had been funded for the PFA and sign to say we got the money. And that's how we did it. We had to wash our own gear because there was no kit woman back then. Had to wash our own gear, um, polish our own boots. We'd no set training gear because obviously we'd no money. We'd all, when eventually Essen Park did open up, it was against Hartlepool, it was a midweek game in the Cup. Our first game back after being saved was against Hartlepool at Victoria Park. Um, ended up 2-2 against Port Vale. Archie Stevens scored two that day and that was us saved, but it was daunting. I honestly thought, uh, we used to all watch the news every night thinking, is the club saved? Because nobody at the club was saying anything. Everybody was in the dark. We just knew that the gates were locked and we weren't getting paid. But thankfully to the PFA, they funded money into the town hall, as I mentioned, and, and we went there and collected our wages. But the modern players now, I'd love to see them in that situation um, and see how they would cope. Would they stay loyal and very, very unlikely? <laughs> very unlikely. I think that was a, a one-off situation. Uh, Wigan deducted three points for not play, uh, paying wages with Borough pe penalised in 86. Um, I don't think the club as a whole were... were uh, were punished or penalised there, Martin. I mean, we were very, very fortunate. The reason we get saved was a consortium of people. There was ICI, there was Newcastle Breweries. Steve Gibson was a young director at the time. Uh, there was a guy from London called Henry Moscovich. He was a businessman. And they all clubbed in to, to save the club. But it was a difficult time, a daunting time. It was my first year in England. It was my first time sampling full-time football. Here I was... Backs against the wall, not getting paid, just being relegated, liquidated, on the verge of bankruptcy. It was a nightmare. I hope Sheffield United get deducted points. Ian, do you know what? Ian, I, I don't. I'm being serious. I don't wish anybody. I don't want us to get to where we want to be because of somebody's being punished and be deducted points. Or I, I, I'd rather do it in merit rather than say, "Oh, that's why we." I'd like people to say they've done it because they were a good team, and we are good. Uh, Andrew Hull say, uh, "There's another one here." Hold on. Oh, with Wigan. Uh, Andrew Hill says, "Do you Akpom will be? Or do you think Akpom will be here next season if Borough don't go up this season? For me, he should stay here at the Borough Burnley. I can only surmise and guess. Like you, Andrew, um, we are a selling club. I think that's public knowledge. Everybody knows that. There's a lot of selling clubs. We're one of them. Um, Akpom, the form he's in, the goals he scored, the spotlight, and the." the um, coverage he's had everywhere, uh, there'll be a host of clubs monitoring his movement and his goals and how good he's been this season. And I've no doubt that people will come in from this summer. And if we don't make the Premier uh, and and daft money comes in, we sign them for under three million. If somebody comes in bid 15, 25, 30, I don't think it's even open to debate. I think it'll be gone. But I hope he's here. I've really enjoyed Akpom. I've enjoyed everybody this season, but I've enjoyed Akpom in particular. I've written about him. He excites me. He's a goal scorer. He's got a one-track mind. When I interviewed him the other week, if you've not heard it, you can listen via my podcast, Total BS, or you can watch it, watch it on YouTube. I'm on YouTube channel. Just put in Bernie Slave and you can watch it. But he's, he's grounded. He's got a one-track mind. I did ask him a question when I met him. I said, come on, uh, Tuba, would you rather play brilliant in a game or score a goal? And he said, score a goal. And that, that was me all over. I wasn't bothered how I played. If I scored the winner, we get the bonus money at the time which we needed. Uh, modern players don't need that, but he's just he's got that hunger, uh, and that's what I like. Colin said I watched that video yesterday. Thumbs up, yeah. I think you'll enjoy it if you. It's a straight. Uh, it's a former player talking to a current player, and he was he was actually asking me questions as well. I was intrigued, it was, and 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 I'm jumping in the fence. I told him his face actually missed it because when if you don't know, Tuba scored his tw the 20th league goal first since 1989 when Marcel scored and he jumped in the fence. Well, when when we're live and I'm at the game at the Riverside, I don't see him on there because people are tapping me in the shoulder saying, what about Tuba? And I'm going, yeah, yeah. And then they're back at the halfway line and then they're going to the lounge and everybody's going, did you see him jumping in the fence? It's a wee bit of respect for you. And I says, I've never seen it. Anyway, I did see it on the telly and then I... I uh, 
I asked him to his face, was it a... And he says, well, I'd watch clips of yourself and I just thought I would do it. So I was humbled by that. I was humbled by that. Uh, Neil Whitley says, Bernie, I hope all is well with you. As a Borough fan, it pains me to say, but Eddie Howe has done a brilliant job at Newcastle. Uh, winning is a good habit to have. You're right, Neil. I mean, I wonder how the likes of Steve Bruce feels. Saying that, he spent a lot of money, hasn't he, since he came in, Eddie Howe. He bought some decent players, but he has, he has a lot of funding. Uh, but Steve Bruce, dear me, I wonder. See, I wonder what Steve Bruce thinks when he looks at Newcastle and how everything's going on. I think, Wood as well, I think, at Middlesbrough. He's left and how good Carrick's come in, just with going back four, keep the same team in the main, wee bit of simplistic stuff. He's cool, whereas Wilder, I could imagine, well, I know he'd be in your face. I like that person, but a lot of players don't like that. Come back to Tuba. Tuba says, do you like that style of management? I says, do you like that calm, composed manager like Michael, okay, well, he told me Carrick's like Wenger to a degree. And I says, do you like that kind of management? He says, yes. And I can imagine a lot of modern players would like that. In my day, I like the confrontation. I don't mean fighting. Manager's shouting at you, you have to go back, the adrenaline's gone. You know, you either will or you, you, you prosper. And I always used to think, come on, I'll show you. I remember Bruce Rear hammered me at half time. I gave him it back verbally because I was playing it in the wing. I was pissed off. And I said, you can get a dummy to play out there. And he's went for me and the two of it, a, a verbal. And then I went out and he's changed me. And I remember scoring the day at the bench, get it right away. And after the game, come in and shoot my hands. That was it, over. I think if you did that in the modern game, I don't know. Uh, Agpom is the best off, uh, he's best off at Borough. Uh, same as Stuart is at Sunderland and Dallas she Alan Shearer was at Blackburn. Only well, time would tell. I mean, Agpom, if he's still here next year, then he has to start all again. He has to keep going for the goals. He has to be a one-track mind. He needs to do the, the business. You know, I, Trubber's um, 27 years of age and this is the first real... There's no doubt he's got he's got the the qualities he's, he's proved it this season, but they've been hard to find over the years for one reason or another. Started Arsenal under Wenger. Wenger raves about him, but a lot of big names ahead of him at that time. Internationals, a lot older, more experienced. Then he was loaned out to a few clubs, then he went abroad, came back, then abroad again, then he came to Middlesbrough. One season here, didn't cut it, didn't look the part. Probably the manager didn't help him. He's went away, came back, and he's he's looked refreshed, revitalised, totally different player, different planet, different sphere. He's been unbelievable, immense. But that's 27, he's 27, he's turned it on. So now, or now, he has to do it for the next five, six years. And keep it going, keep scoring, keep creating the hunger, the desire. Uh, have you any stories about the infamous George Safecracker Reynolds or Charlie Amer? I do actually, the Centurion. I tell you, it's funny how you just asked, have you any stories about the inf infamous George Safecracker Reynolds? So George Reynolds was in charge of Darlington and George had built that fantastic stadium that turned into a white elephant. The council wouldn't let him progress with it and put everything in a standstill and it ended up a white elephant. It was only, I think, Elton John playing it. The team weren't playing in it. But I always remember George, I was doing the legend show with uh, Malcolm McDonald and um, Eric Gates at the time. So he's built the stadium and he joined us a couple of times on the legend via the phone. And he says, lads, I'd love to invite you down and, uh, you know, to show you how good it is. And anyway, we go down. He's charming, we jump out of the car, George's there, George comes out, how are you doing? Love the radio show, we say, oh, I enjoyed your company when you've, you've joined us. Anyway, he goes running on it, and as we're walking back to the car after he gave us a tour of the stadium, which was fantastic, um, he says, do you know what? Some kids had shouted something like, abusive towards him. He says, do you know what I say to these kids? All these kids say, oh, George, you're a fat master. He says, do you know what I tell them? I say, do you know why I'm fat, son? Because every time I sleep with your mother, she gives me a piece of cake. That was George Reynolds for you. I know you're not allowed to say that. You couldn't say that on the radio. Um, I thought it was hilarious. You know, because George was an elderly man. He was a character. Um, he's no longer with us, is he? Yeah, I think I think he was a one-off. Don't get me wrong, he was, he was ultra-eccentric. Some people say he would be balmy or whatever, but I th they all get married in a, a convict uh, uniform. Is that right? Did, did I see a picture? 
the convict uniform on. Right? He'd been in the old, the old dunny a few times. I'm excited for our transfers this summer, especially if we get up. I can see Carrick attracting some decent names, players. Well, Ian, like Brian Robson, if he's got the money, he's got the name to, 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 to attract him. If there's no money, no matter, no disrespect, but no matter what name you are. When Brian Robson was attracting Janino, Brazilian, World Cup winner, and Ravenel, European winner, Italian, Stallion, and, and all these guys, they'd all heard of Brian Robson and knew how good he was and how big a name in football and how England international, great, captain, fantastic. But they wouldn't have came to Middlesbrough for nothing. The Robbo was the initial attraction and then on the back of it, it was all about the money. If you think otherwise, you're a raven lunatic. Colin says, do you think the break will do us good, Bernie? I personally hate the momentum being halted. And from personal view, I will be bored silly. I think we'll all be bored silly. I agree with that one, Colin. But you know what? How I used to operate as an individual, I never asked any of my mates at the time, but if I had played Saturday and I'm Palm or Archer or Foz or, or the team in general, but a goal scorer, and I scored and we've won handsomely 4-0, I'm, I'm thinking, do you know what? I'm going to bask in the glory for a week or to the next game so you can enjoy the moment. The only times I never enjoyed getting into a break was when we get done and I played crap and I never scored. I couldn't wait to the next game. I wanted, if we played Saturday and I had a man and we get beaten, I never scored, I missed a few chances. I wanted the game to be two or three days later to get back in the groove, to turn it on, to get my tail up again, get back in the goal trail. Um, so winning, I think, is good. You can back, because what happens when you when you play football and you're playing Saturdays, midweek, Saturdays, midweek, um, yeah, you, you just, you don't really appreciate what you've done you, you don't take stock you you just you play one game then you're biting in the wins and then but now the lads have got a, a week over a week to reflect and think Do you know what we've had a great time so far but it's sad really this, this is a modern game again Middlesbrough do not have another Saturday game sad that isn't it I mean years ago every game was Saturdays three o'clock kickoff. now we play but what it is it pees me off and I sympathise with the fans. The Sky and the clubs are all in bed with each other. They all reap the rewards, i.e. the money, and and, the, and and there's plenty of that floating around. If the fans get shit on, all the clubs think, oh, we look after the fans. No. Sky, that's why the, the Borough fans are always thinking, Sky Sports, F off. They get messed about. So we look at the... the, the it comes out the, the season, the calendar year, who's playing where, where are we playing? And then people get booked, oh, we'll do this, we'll go in that year, we'll book a hotel, we'll go to Norwich, or we'll go to Luton. And and then all of a sudden, as the season progresses, just, the rug gets pulled. And then you're left with a hotel, maybe a bill, you maybe booked a train or a bus or whatever, and the clubs in, in the, the sky don't give a shit. And that's what pees me off. I mean, I was, I was talking to the Saturday and a lot of people, well, the people agreed. I don't see how you can disagree. But that's one of the downsides, putting in advance, because the rug can get pulled any time. The, the, the television dictates and the clubs go along with it because they're, they're quids in and there's no thought of the fan. And that's been on for years and that pays me off. So um, I think the break will do as well, Call. I don't, I don't think it'll disturb us any way, shape or form. I think it's just good for the players. And no doubt they've got a few days, I know they've got a few days off, I'll not say what, when, but they've got a few days off this week to probably just relax, reflect and get ready for the next eight cup finals. Uh, Lee Waddle says, is the best football live seen us play? It's the best football I've seen us play 15 to 20 years. Squad looks solid at the minute. I agree, Lee. Um, the football has been refreshing, um, direct, creative, ruthless, um, and we've got strikers we can hang our hat on now. I mean, over the years, you would think, you'd go to games and think, who's going to score the goals today? Who's going to create the goals? But now we know Gels is going to create. We know, for definite, we know that Tuba's going to get goals, as is Ramsey, as is Archer, as is Foz. So we go there knowing that we're going to be entertained and I, I would agree that this is some of the best football uh, Wilder will be going to bed at night saying to himself how shite was that at the borough 
Maybe he is. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're right. Uh, Bob Paisley style certainly worked with volatile characters like Soonest McDermott, etc. Martin Smith. I agree with that as well, Martin. I mean, Trubber asked me when I did the chat, he says, when I says, so you like that style of management? He says, yeah, I like, um, I like Vengers, I like Michael Carrick, he's similar. And he says, what do you like? And I says, I like volatile. I, I like the volatile style. Bruce Rear would be in my face and you, what you and I would, I'd maybe give it back, but that was me getting pumped up again. Uh, in some games when you're not doing the business, you needed to rock up your jacksie. And I got many a rocket, I can assure you. Um, but I responded to that. Some some other players, depending on your makeup and your attitude and your personality, some players don't like that. I mean, I can imagine in the modern world now, players would go, oh, I'm getting bullied by the manager. What, with a few words, getting bullied? Shut up. But that's the modern game for you. You know, back in my day, managers would get you with a scruff of the neck. You know what I mean? I've seen that first hand. Um... You couldn't do that now, dear God, if you did that to anybody now, you'd be sacked. I quite enjoyed that. <laughs> I enjoyed watching that. You see a few of my mates getting it. Um, I think Big Jack would kick him out of the club like Creighton Johnson, laugh out loud, Agpom in first season. Big Jack probably would have. Yeah, I remember Jack saying that, uh, who was it? Craig Johnson, wasn't it? Craig Johnson who came over to Australia and went on to Liverpool fame for the younger viewers. Uh and he'd, he paid for his own flight over. He was in trial at Middlesbrough. He was in Aussie. He's came to Ayrson Park and Jack's watched him a couple of times. And he told, I've, I've interviewed him, so I know the story, uh, Craig Johnson. And uh, Jack says to him, listen, son, you might as well go back to Australia. You'll never be a footballer as long as you've got a hole in your ass." Because you Jack knew, didn't it? <laughs> Craig Johnson went like, one of the right few trophies for Liverpool. No, but Jack, hey, I'm a Jack fan. I love Jack Charlton, the late, great Jack Charlton. If you've not watched the movie Finding Jack or the DVD or on Netflix, watch it. It's um, it's funny, it's sad. And there was one wee clip where his son kept all his quotes. He had them on this board. And one of his quotes that he, his son had kept that Jack had written was, be a dictator, but be a nice one. And that's what he was. I was privileged and fortunate enough to be with Jack in the Republic of Ireland squad for three years. Went to the World Cup 1990 with Jack as a squad player, getting the back door after two games. But Jack was, I never heard any player saying a bad word about Jack. He was a straight talker, no messing, would never stab anybody. He just told you straight. And uh, I think the players admired that. I certainly did. That's the way I like to think I operate. Be straight. No backstabbing, no talking behind the back. Just tell him straight to the face. And, and Jack was brilliant at that. Uh, I think it was, uh, yeah. Uh, best character to motivate an individual to get the best out of them is aggression, baby oil and handcuffs. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you've got a point there. Uh, do you think Southgate would ever consider Akpong? Um, well, no, because I think uh, I think Chuba's 2017 says he wanted to play for Nigeria. I know that's not happened. By all accounts, they've got a few good strikers, but by God, they must be good this season because Ashpong's been in fire. I've just seen, well, he's top of the, the pile when it comes to goals in the championship. Um, but I assessed him. I remember playing with Pallister in the in the, the equivalent of the championship and, and Sir Bobby Robson gave him a cap and he was capped. So I've seen it happening with players in a, not playing the top flight, the championship or the, the division below the top one, but... Um, why not? If it, I don't know. Look, he played with England at youth level. Akpom, Trubber Akpom. And then 2017, nothing's happening with England. He's bobbing around in uh, loan periods with clubs or whatever. And now he's doing the business. I think if England came in, he may bow and go, do you know what? But I think Nigeria need pledges his allegiances to them in 2017. But he's not at the cap yet. But surely, surely... No, surely, surely, you must get a cap. Uh, Andrew Hill says, who's the perfect replacement to replace Akpom if he leaves the borough and go to the Premier League club, Bernie? Who's the perfect replacement to replace Akpom? None, nobody comes off the top of my head. A, you would need money, and B, you'd need to scour um, Europe to replace Akpom. I mean, there's nobody, there's nobody would have... Anybody that watched Tuber Akpom 
his first year at Middlesbrough, he's in at the team, scored a couple, injured, loss of form at the team, then he headed off. There's nobody would have predicted he's going to come back like a man possessed, scoring goals, playing every game, holding the ball up, movement terrific, movement terrific, creating, re-energised. There's nobody. I mean, I told them that he faced. The people had written him off and I was one of them. I did not think that he possessed what, what he's shown us. He's been unbelievable. And to, and to go with it, he's a great human being. He's a great lad. As I say, he's grounded. He's religious. He's grounded. He's focused. He wants to do the best for himself, for the club. The fans have taken to him as they, they do with strikers. Um, yeah, so... Just but but regarding who who would replace I thought hey we don't know what's happening yet if we don't get promotion I think if somebody comes in with daft money we will sell them I'm sure you'd agree with that if we uh, go up uh, he must be given a chance and I'm sure he'd be more than delighted to test his wits against the best players in the country that's what we were all aiming for isn't it good comeback by George <laughs> George the best we're talking about I what was oh sorry George Reynolds yeah 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 good comeback by George sorry. I was thinking George Best with Mickey Hoss will get mentioned. George Reynolds. I worked with George Reynolds' son-in-law. He says the biggest, he uh, he's the biggest liar you will ever meet. Ha ha. Oh no, I can't read that last bit. There was, there was another story with George Reynolds. Mickey Hoss tells the story that he had his own, um, what was it? Laminated ki kitchen uh, tops. And he always had his door open, he would sit in his office. And he's sitting in his office this day, and this guy's walking by, and the, the letter he's sure there's a flap. And he shouts, Oh, see his name is George. George, get that fixed. That noise is doing my head in. Because every time he passed the door, I was doing that. He's I just see Gary Hamilton come up. Bernie, you've been getting my messages. Yeah, so Gary Hamilton's getting in touch. He must have been at some airport. Because he's coming back. So anyway, George goes like, get that sorted. So anyway, the lad walks by me, flat my shoe, heads off. Next day, doors open again. George is there. Guy passes again. The flat my shoe. George says, hey, listen, come in. I told you to get that fixed. And he pulled out a big wad of money with elastic band on it. And he took the elastic band off. And the lad's thinking, yeah, he's going to give me money for shoes. And he threw him the elastic band. He says, wrap that round it and get yourself a new pair of shoes and put the money back in his pocket. I thought that was very funny. Uh, he was in Durham jail with me, Big George. Oh, that'd have been some some uh, some duo that. I'd have been like a craze. Uh, Matt Sutherland says this weekend is a great time to go and watch a local side and help them out. That's right. There's no um, there's no domestic football, and if you you're a fan of football, go and see one of your local teams. Red Cam, Mass, Billingham. They're, they're all about Stockton. I don't know who's playing at home, but there will be games on. Hey, Bernie, do you think Isaiah Jones has hit a bit of a bad form? Carrick doesn't fancy him, or has he been found out a bit at this level? Neil, it's what I say. When, when a player comes on the scene, new, what is a bit of an unknown quantity. Players are unknown quantities first come on the scene. And then all of a sudden, players, teams, opposition, fans, they become familiar with the style and the brand and the makeup of the player. And Isaiah Jones, yeah, there'll be people who found him out and thought, oh, he's a one-trick pony or he's this or he's that. But I think we've not been in the team has really affected his confidence. And it, he, he would have felt a few boos over the season, a wee bit of rejection, whereas fans have put him on a pedestal, what you're doing with Hackney at the minute. And I always say, keep your powder dry, don't get carried away, don't overdo it with these young lads. Because next year, if we get in the Premier Hackney might not even be in the team because we'll have money at our disposal. There might be bigger and better players out there than Hackney. That's not being disrespectful. That's the reality of football. The more money you're going to try and invest and get bigger players and international players. and um, So Isaiah Jones came into the scene fresh. He was direct, skillful, creative, scored a few goals, uh, great engines up and down and as a wing back. And then he's just lost his way totally. Um, and I'll be surprised if he's here next year. Carrick's a new, a new mindset. He's come in, new ideas. Done away with the wing-back role. Uh, that's why Paddy's suffered as well. Big Paddy McNair was one of the three uh, centre-backs. He's been in and out of the team. 
So I think Isaiah Jones, not so much he found it, I think just new manager comes in, new ideas. We've all had that. When you're a player, a new manager comes in, everybody's concerned until they get to know if the new manager fancies you. I've been through it myself at Middlesbrough. Lenny Lawrence came in. I mean, I've no axe agreement with Lenny now. We've, we've spoken, he's been in my podcast, and I'm, I'm cool with Lenny now. Um, but yeah, I remember he would he signed Andy Payton and I went to Lenny and I said, listen, you judges, we know how much we cost because Andy Payton was a million, I was 25 grand years ago. I said, don't be judging us with that. Judges with what we do in the park. Needless to say, Andy Payton ended up with Celtic and I was still going. Uh, so anyway, managers come in, like their own players, money they spend, they have to justify spending it. Uh, and that's where the difficulty comes in. I've always believed that, that, that managers want the players that they have signed to be better than the existing players because they don't, they don't get, there's a cat, there's my cat. They don't get the credit for guys that's been in over the years. Bernie, if the barcodes get into Europe, we'll never hear the end of it. But we'll have the last laugh as they will, they will be trophy virgins for another year. Can I disagree with that, uh, Stuart? Can I disagree with that? Um, let's see if I've any more and then I've got a few to read out. Andy Townsend was on Talk about this afternoon. Common sense guy. Solid pro. Wherever he went. Was good company with the Republic. Was a good company. Yeah, Andy was a... Andy was a... A joker. Liked to laugh. Good player, Andy. Tough eyes. Don't forget he came to Middlesbrough, Andy. Um, yeah, Andy, Andy Townsend was a... Played with the Villa as well. Andy played with Chelsea, been around, but uh, Big Jack loved him. He was a leader. Andy was a leader. Set the scene, set example, good hard tackle. He was a fair player as well. Played in a couple of World Cups for the Republic. I see Jed Spence playing for Nance in France and Piero playing for Boca Juniors. Yeah, Jed Spence, Nance. In France, what a nice life, eh, France. And Piero, with the Piero thing. I, hey, Piero's still a player, right? I reckon Piero will be back next season. Well, he's still a player, he will be back. I think that Carrick must have a look at him. Um, but he has been bought a juniors. If you don't know who Piero is, came over for Argentina, cost us five million quid. Uh, very few games played. I think he had a bit of the COVID at the time injuries and then disappeared off the radar but five million pounds is a lot of money for us uh not to be playing him uh who was the best player you played with at the borough bernard's it was pallister pallister no cause he's my mate because he was elegant and stylish um i always knew he was destined for big things but went even further than anticipated went to my united for nine years won everything in the game played under the best manager arguably in the world sir alec ferguson so yeah, I mean, him and Mowbray was a great combination. But when he went to Man United, him and Steve Bruce became, became a great combination. Because Palace and Mow, uh, Mowbray and um, Steve Bruce were the tough guys who would put their head in where it hurts. Um, well, me and Pally wouldn't put their boots. So they were the tough guys and Pally would feed off them. But he could run out of defence, elegant. It was, his near he, Alan Hansen, uh, that's the nearest, uh, the biggest compliment you can pay him. Some people say who was better, Pallister or Rio Ferdinand. I think it was Pallister. George was interviewed, told good story. His mum brought him and his sister up alone and had no. So when, <laughs> here we go, uh, up alone. And so we're talking about uh, George Reynolds, the former uh, Darlington guy. Uh, head man. George was interviewed, told good story. His mum brought him and his sister up alone and had no. So when. Her better uh, aunt was visiting for tea. She says, when I asked what you want for tea, just say we're not hungry. We're still full after dinner. After tea, she brought huge trifle out and asked who wanted some. So we said, yes, please. But she said, you couldn't eat your tea. So you're getting no pudding. Oh, dear. <laughs> uh, George was a character. He was a character. Um, right, a couple of these. That's us finished because we're 59 a minute away. Um... Where was it? Bernie Carrick Tuba 
Tuber Giles must be under scrutiny f uh, from admiring club for Lenny. I mentioned that earlier. I mean, there's no doubt. Carrick's at the dream start. He, he's on the radar there at a lot of clubs. We've heard that. Talk about Crystal Palace. If Moyes gets sacked at West Ham, we'll be going there. Uh, Tuber, all-round play and top championship scorer, apart from Middlesbrough's top scorer, is an attraction. And, and, and Giles is a serial creator. He's created more goals than anybody in the Middlesbrough team. So they'll all any be under the, the radar of the club. Bob the Borough fan says, do you think Sheffield United will take their eye off the league with the cup result last night? I mentioned that earlier. I don't think they will. I personally think the Cups get no burn on the league position whatsoever. As I say, you look at Middlesbrough, Herbs, the team has have bought. Over the years, not to early doors, we've never improved the league form. It's a myth. It's an excuse. Uh, Franny, I thought you say Franny, man. Franny, watched your interview with Tuba. Absolutely loved it. Thanks for that. Uh, Lee says, great to see Chuba, not just Burroughs, but the championship top scorer. I mentioned that there. He's got 25, 24 league goals. Credible. Frank Carrick being linked with Crystal Palace. So I mentioned that. West Ham. Uh, why is Chuba Ashpom not cut for his country? I mentioned that as well. 2017, he pledged his allegiances to uh, Nigeria. I did say Nigeria, didn't I? Did I say Nigeria earlier? Oh, it's Nigeria. Um, yeah, so, and Carol says, Hi, Benny. I'd love to chat with High Flying Tuba. Both of you looked relaxed. Yeah, we did. Um, well, listen, thanks very much for joining us. We're bang on. That's an hour. Um, but again, well, not on Saturday. I'm going to do it. So I'll see you if you're at the, uh, the town hall on Friday, Middlesbrough Town Hall for the Gary Pattinson charity night. Look forward to seeing you. Um, I'll be back on the Monday doing a podcast and I'll be doing a YouTube live because I'm going to do loads of footage at the town hall with all the players and the night and the, the raffles and we're in for a great night. So thanks very much for joining us. Well done, Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough players, enjoy your break. Fans, enjoy your break. And then we'll be at it again the week after. Thanks very much. Up the borough and up everybody else in the northeast in a nice way.